This is Lee Brown from No Smoke Boxing. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn, live from Las Vegas. Um, Eddie, how has Canelo versus Belanga fight week been so far? And um, what are your thoughts ahead of Saturday night? Yeah, it's been great. Great buzz as always. I mean, you know, the grand arrivals, press conference yesterday. Um, it's always massive when Canelo's fighting, you know, and, and now the chance of another young, undefeated contender, up and comer, whatever you want to call it, chasing the dream, rolling the dice against one of the best to ever do it. So Belanga's up for it, really confident, great shape. And I think he'll give him a great fight. I really do. Is it a tough one for you with having such a soft spot for Canelo after promoting him, but Belanga, your fighter, is it, does that give it sort of a bit of a strange aura for you, Eddie? No, like I'm team Belanga this week. You know, I love Canelo. Um, I think he, like, I understand his business. He understands my business as well. And he will always, I think if he was given the choice, he would always rather work with Matram, but he's going to chase whatever deal suits him. And the PBC deal at the time was a deal that suited him. I believe this is the last fight of the contract, but I'm just pleased to deliver it for Edgar. You know, when he left top rank, we said we'd headline him twice, then he'd fight Canelo. But when Canelo went to PBC, it was like, oh, no. How are we going to get that shot? But we managed to find a way. And, you know, for Edgar, it changes his life on Saturday night. And hopefully he can change his life from a legacy point of view as well as a financial point of view and and go on and, and dethrone one of the, one of the all-time great kings of the sport. Uh, Eddie, with that fight this week, um, a card that's sort of gone under the radar a little bit, but a very, very good fight tomorrow night is your Mexico show between Rocky yeah. Hernandez and... Thomas Matisse. Um, did you want to take us through that card? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pure 50-50 fight in the main event. Great fight. You know, and we are massive Rocky Hernandez fans because every fight is a complete war. You know, when you think about it, he was really, what, 30 seconds away from being WBC world champion. And there would have been massive fights out there for him. But he's positioning himself back in the mandatory for, for that shot at the world title. And Matisse is really good. Like he's got a very good boxing IQ. He can punch. And I do think it's a 50-50 fight. You know, um, Grover on the undercard as well. Great fight. You know, two punches in a third fight tonight. night. Uh, Ruba Clava, one of our top young prospects as well, has got a good fight. The Mexican cards, as you guys know, mm -hmm. are just brilliant to watch. And yeah. they do really well for us on the zone as well. Obviously, we have a, a very strong Hispanic audience um, in terms of the zone subscribers through the Canelo Alvarez subscriptions. And we always do big numbers for our Mexico shows. And they've kind of become a little bit, we know that we've got a strong sort of Mexican fan base watching those, but even with the boxing hardcore, I feel like those fights have almost become, those shows have become almost like a cult following. Yeah. You know what you can get. And, and everybody that tunes in, the feedback that we always get from those shows is great. And you know, we'll be leaving the way in tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon in Vegas flying straight to Hermosillo for that show. I'm not going to miss it. And, you know, Mexican Independence Weekend, it's a great way to kick it off. Um, news obviously come out last night about Shakur Stevens' injury. Um, where does that leave Joe Cordina in terms of being on that card? Is he still going to feature or do you now need to find him a new date? You know, I think obviously that's down to, to Riyadh season. I, I think it's unlikely um, that Joe will feature on that card now. But again, you know, who knows what's going to happen? Um you know, we'll keep our eyes peeled for a big fight for him because, you know, he put his hand up for that fight. He was up for it. He jumped straight in and, you know, he wants to make all the biggest fights out there that he can. It's unlikely he'll fight Shakur Stevenson now because he's going to get ordered to go straight into the Zapata fight when he comes um, out of surgery, which has now been done and, and back to the ring in 2025. So, um, you know, it was, it was very disappointing, not just for Shakur, but also for Joe Caldina. And, you know, fair play to him for taking the shot in the first place. So we have to see what's next for him. And obviously Shakur, just rest now, get over that operation and be back in early 2025. You say about, um, obviously, what's next for Cordino. Is there any chance he could um, feature in Monaco again? And I wanted to ask you about that card anyway. Do you know your headline fight for that? Or are you still sort of figuring that out with maybe the likes of Zelfa Barrett or Leeward maybe potentially featuring on that? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, Lee Woods Alpha Barrett is actually a fight I'd like to make. Mm -hmm. But it's a fight that I'd like to make for the UK. Um, so we'll see where we get to 
with that. We've obviously got a, a big UK show for November to announce. It won't be on that, but it's another all British fight um, taking place on that card. Monaco is not put together yet. It is December 14th, so we've got a little bit of time. But there will be two world championship fights on that card. Whether Joe's on that, you know, um, people talk about Andy Cruz as well. Everything is in play for Monaco, but nothing confirmed yet. Okay. Um, it's just been broke by ESPN Mexico that Estrada will be moving up and not taking the BAM rematch. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when you finish a fight, the automatic reaction is always, I want the rematch. I want the rematch. And he exercised the rematch clause with BAM. Um, but I always felt that when he thought about the fight, when he watched the fight back, I mean, it was a great fight. And I know he dropped Bam with kind of a flash knockdown, but he did really get battered in that fight. Um, and does he truly believe that he can beat Bam? And I think the answer is no. And that's why I think he'll move to Bantam to chase some fights up there. But, you know, he just decided that the rematch wasn't for him. And we're happy with that. You know, we really want that big unification fight with Puma Martinez. And I think that's one of the best fights in the sport. He also has a mandatory uh, bam against Pedro Guervo. You just saw beat Maloney as well. Um, so we may have to deal with that. And that will probably land in November of this year. And then we want to move straight into the unification fight against Puma Martinez. I wanted to get um, the latest on Lewis Crocovas, Paddy Donovan. Is that happening next? Is that even happening this year? Yeah, it's definitely the fight that we want to make. We're looking at our run of events now. You know, you've got obviously um, Dixon against Harper, September 28th. Progray against Jack Cattrall, October 26th. A great card in Manchester. November 30, we hope, will be announced tomorrow um, in Birmingham. And then December, you know, we've got December 7 will be a show in America. December 14th will be Monaco. December 21st is Usyk against Fury. So we're just trying to pull out the Saturday night for the next fight night. And the next fight night beyond November 30 will probably be Crocker against Donovan. Um, it's a, definitely a fight that we want to make. I think it's a tremendous fight. Both guys are really highly ranked now with the governing bodies, could end up being a final eliminator for the world title. And yeah, definitely a fight that we're looking to make. You actually mentioned a date, um, which features in my next question. Um, December the 7th, are you looking um, to go to Puerto Rico for that one with um, Sabrina Matias headlining? Um, I think there is a chance we could be in Puerto Rico. If that's with Matias, you know, we've also got Richardson Hitchens. I mean, there's talk of a fight with him over in Puerto Rico as well. We've got a very deep roster of Puerto Rican talent as well. Nothing confirmed whether December 7th will be in Puerto Rico. There is a chance it could be in the US. Um, but again, probably I think next week we're going to be in a position to announce our November show in America and that December 7th card as well. Um, the EBU of ordered Peter McGrath as Dennis McCann. What's your what's your thoughts on that fight, Eddie? So my thoughts in that fight is it's an absolutely tremendous fight. I think that it's one of the best fights that can be made in British boxing. I think it's a real 50-50 fight. Um, McGrath is fighting Brad Foster on September 28th, and we're all in for that fight. You know, I've spoken to George Warren. It's now been ordered by the EBU and today uh, for the British title as well. Oh, wow. um, so we want that fight. And I said to George, you know, the, the 5v5 is inevitable for early 2025. And that would be an absolutely perfect fight for the 5v5. So we're all in for Peter McGraw against Dennis McCann. I think it's an absolute brilliant fight. Two tremendous young fighters. Is, you mentioned that 5v5. Is that likely to take place in Riyadh again? Or is that I'm a decided, Riyadh show that I'm we decided, yeah. I mean, obviously... You know, His Excellency did the Riyadh season 5v5, and we're more than happy to, to go again in Riyadh. We're going to do it anyway, quite frankly, because it was such a huge success. Um, and we've already put down 
you know, chatting all the time, many fights that could be made between the promotional companies. I do think this time around, it'll have much more of a UK v UK feel. Obviously, last time we had Deontay Wilder, Philip Hergovich, Amo Williams, Ray Ford. We only had one Brit in it. And I think this time it would be all British fighters. And, you know, I've been speaking to George and Frank and, and we're desperate to do another one. That leads me nicely into my last question because I know you've you've pushed for time, but you mentioned obviously about Matchroom and Queensbury and all British fighters. Obviously, there's a small matter of AJ versus Drew Bar next week, Eddie. Um, how excited are you for that? And what what are your thoughts going into that fight week? Mm -hmm. Very excited, very proud of Anthony. A um, bit nervous as as I am going into all AJ fights, but it's just such a meteoric comeback, you know. I did a thing with Sky Sports earlier today and I said, you know, if AJ loses, do you think that's the end of the road for him? I said, you said that going into the Ruiz 2 rematch. That was in 2019. You know, you said that going into the Usyk rematch and when he lost that fight, you said it was the end of the road for him. Now you're saying he's in the form of his life. You know, he's looking better than he's ever looked before. And the reality is, is every fight is dangerous in this division and things can change with one punch in terms of your boxing future. And I think this is a very dangerous fight. You know, you get a lot of people trying to talk up Dubois, sparring rumours eight years ago, whatever it was. You yeah. don't need to talk him up. He's a really good fighter and he's a really dangerous fighter. And this is one of the best fights that can be made in the division. It's two massive punching heavyweights, two Brits, two guys that I think are in their primes of their career so far. For Dubois, he's come back with a couple of good wins. AJ's looking better than I've ever seen him look. He's punching so hard. But it's a really dangerous fight for both men. And, you know, for us, if AJ can be victorious, which we believe he will be, to see him, you know, stand as a three-time world heavyweight champion will be a very proud moment because it's a, it's a very short list and, you know, puts us right back on track to the ultimate dream, which has always been there, which is to become undisputed. Can I nail you to a prediction for that one? It, I think a lot depends on the tactics that Don Charles puts together. I, th I think it's going to be interesting to see how Daniel deals with the fight week, deals with fight night, deals with the occasion. But if he comes out hot, like he did in the Hergovich fight, I think the fight will be over inside three rounds. And, and that's the prediction that I have at the moment, is that Anthony Joshua will knock him out inside three rounds. Well, you had it here first. Uh, Eddie Hearn, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Um, Good luck for the weekend and for next week, and we'll catch up with you soon. Cheers. Speak soon.